Hello, and welcome to the happy hour with Teresa Greco. On the happy hour is where you will learn about the principles and practices that lead to true inner happiness, which is unwavering, in abundance, and is not dependent on you buying, earning, achieving, searching, or doing anything to be happy. A huge weight can be lifted off of your shoulders when you know there is a part of you that is always happy. You just need to make time to connect with it. On my show is where my guests and I explore the latest physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being practices, and together we'll advise you on the actionable steps you can take towards a happier, more fulfilled, authentic life. The happiness principle for today's show is living your purpose. Have you ever wondered whether you are living your life's true purpose? This is a question with which many of us struggle, as only about 25% of adults claim to know what their true purpose is. People are on the quest to discover their life's purpose and are turning to books, weekend retreats, and purpose coaches for guidance. But the truth is, no one can tell you what your true purpose is. Although they might offer you strategies that can help you to narrow down what activities you enjoy, but what about if purpose isn't one single thing you came here to accomplish? What if it was more about feeling on purpose than it is about your one true purpose? The feeling of being on purpose is where in any moment you feel like you are in the right place at the right time. You feel happy and there's a knowing inside of you that says you are exactly where you need to be in this exact moment. That inner knowing inside of us is saying, yes, this feels right when we are doing the many things we came here to do. We can feel on purpose at many different times in our lives because purpose isn't tied to one single activity, but rather it is associated with a feeling while participating in various activities and at different points in our lives. For example, being on purpose might mean that while your kids are young, you're happy being a mother and your life revolving around them and their activities. But once they're older, then you feel on purpose when returning into the workforce and doing a job that makes you feel happy. So purpose is not about searching for that one thing that will fill that void within us, but more about feeling happy and on purpose, participating in various activities throughout our entire life. On today's show, we're going to be speaking about the steps we can take to discover our soul's purpose so that we can feel on purpose in our lives in order to live the happy life we came here to live. My guest today is a best-selling author, channeler, and soul purpose coach. In her book, Heal and Awaken the Goddess Within, Genevieve Tager channeled 22 teachings, initiations, and activations from the goddesses and benevolent realm to assist people in awakening and living a joyous life. I'd like to introduce you to Genevieve Tager. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Now, Genevieve, before we get into talking about living a joyful and purposeful life, I'm wondering if you can tell our listeners what channeling is in case they're, they've never heard of it. Yeah, it's one of those things that many people are confused about what channeling is. And <clears throat> the way I describe it is that I just connect to the Holy Spirit. I connect to God. I connect to angels ascended masters, that kind of thing. And I, I tap into receiving the, the divine guidance that comes through them. I'm not going into any trance or anything like that. I just have the ability to be able to listen to the guidance that comes. And it, it shows up in the form of thoughts in my head, and I'm able to, to basically 
give that, relay that information to you. So we all have that ability to be able to tap into a high divine guidance. And it's just something that I practice over time. And it's something that I've learned that I can actually tap into angels and ascended masters and goddesses. So yeah, that's, that's my experience of channeling. And how would you say that's different than mediumship for the, those that go to like a fortune teller or? Um... Yeah. So with mediumship, the way I experienced the difference, it's kind of, it's very subtle, but what with mediumship, one is often experiencing people who have passed on, who've who lived here and then they passed on and they're connecting on the other side, just kind of standing in that psychic energy and receiving maybe subtle, subtle words or, or some colors or some images. And so the person receiving this mediumship often tends to translate the images or the colors or the words, and they may get a few words here and there. Um, but it's often, they're tapping into people who have passed on and helping people to give encouragement that that they're okay. Yeah. And I would say that the guidance that channelers can offer has more to do with the soul or the, or the spirit versus our human experience, like what you might get guidance from when you go to a medium. Yeah, because... That's what I found personally is that channeling seems to be something where you're getting some kind of, it's some kind of teaching about life, helping you to see past illusions, helping you to move forward in life in a, in a new way, big way. And mediumship or psychic, you know, when someone does a psychic reading, that tends to be just whatever's coming their way for that person to receive information. And sometimes, it could be about something that they're experiencing in today's life and maybe helping them with something specific. But with channeling, channeling, I can get into very specifics myself and ask specific questions on my life. But the answers are always um, kind of holistic and really seeing you, helping you to see beyond the illusions because we all have illusions. We always have these illusions where they're helping us to see something that we haven't thought about before. Mm -hmm. From the soul perspective that many of us are not um, taught even to connect with that aspect of ourselves that we might refer to as our gut instinct, our intuition, that small little voice inside of us that is always guiding us that I like to also look at or refer to as our inner being that which is different than our outer being. The outer being is how we show up in the world, maybe the different personalities or identities we associate ourselves with. But our inner being is our spiritual self. And the part that I believe, from my perspective, that I see myself as a spiritual being having a human experience, and that I am living from that part first, in this human in this human body and it changes my experience of how i live on this 3d planet in this 3d reality yeah exactly we're you know we're being invited to tap more into that spirit to to really realize that we can all live more our spirit's desires here on earth that we don't have to be kind of that feeling of suppression or blind in our life and be more aware, be more aware and awake of this power that our spirit has so that we can live these joyous lives, that we can be excited about life, that we can, or when life is, you know, not so nice, that we can know how can we see past that? How can we move past that? Because obviously we have human experiences too, but we're being asked to really live a life where we can experience our spirit we can experience that vibration we can experience the joy we can experience all those qualities we can experience the power the power of this divine to really realize that we have this this pipeline connection and all we need to do is just 
shift our focus so that we can experience this pipeline connection all the time. That's kind of what I feel is, is humanity's ready for it. They're ready to awaken to that and to really start experiencing it and, and not believe that the old ways is the way that we have to continue in life, really. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted you on the show today, because I really wanted to look at this idea of purpose from a spiritual perspective, that oftentimes when we think about purpose, that statistically, they say that only about 25% of people actually feel like they are living their purpose, that, you know, when they ask people this question near, near the end of their lives, how, you know, how much do you think that you've lived your purpose, and many people feel like they're not living it. And that is causing some people upset because they feel that either there's something missing in their life or they're feeling that they're not living a happy life. They're not feeling fulfilled in the lives that they're living, which makes people think that purpose is very much tied to perhaps one big and true thing that we came here to do that when I started my happiness journey over 10 years ago, that for me, that idea around purpose was tied to this feeling that something was missing, that there was a void that I felt inside of me, that it didn't matter what I did, how much more experience I got, how many more degrees or certificates I got. It didn't matter how, many, how much more I achieved this feeling that something was missing. And that even though everything I did was trying to help other people and trying to find that fulfillment in the helping of other people, I still felt that there was this void. And so then that had me asking, am I living my life's true purpose and full potential if I'm feeling this void? Although my life checked off all the boxes that family, society, culture, religion tell you you need to have a happy life. So very fulfilling career, beautiful, healthy family, our own home, cars in the driveway, vacations here, lots of wonderful things. And so why is it that I still felt that something was missing and it, and that there was this void that it didn't matter what I bought, what I earned, what I achieved, where I went, what I did, I still couldn't manage to fill it. And I thought perhaps it had something to do with this idea of purpose, but I now know it's, it's not. So if you want to maybe speak to that a little bit. Yeah. And I'm glad, I'm so glad that you brought that up because so many people are hard on themselves. They really are. They're hard on themselves. They're living a life where they feel that, you know, they have no choice. They have to do a certain career and they're not liking it because they're discovering maybe the corporate world is a bit tough and they're experiencing some things that they don't like. It doesn't taste good in their mouths, right? And so they get hard on themselves because they feel stuck in a situation. But the key thing here is to ask yourself, what is it that drives you inside of yourself? Is it perhaps making people laugh at work. Why can't you do that? Why can't you take those moments and, and find moments to make people laugh? Do things that make you feel alive inside, despite what's going on with you in work, in the work situation. For instance, what if someone couldn't afford to even have a house and they lived in a hut? There are many people who live in huts in the world. How is it that they can live their purpose because it would be unfair to say that they can't live their purpose just because they don't have the ability to have a house and be able to have shoes. As an example, they can. They can experience whatever drives them inside of themselves. And if they have a lust for experiencing sports, you know, they can go run out on the field and, and, and experience that, experience that exuberance to, to be able to be active and, and feel like you're, you're kind of making your body come alive. Some people have that. Some people have that passion. Or what if it, it is about writing? Well, maybe they don't have paper and pen, but maybe they can say this poetry and, and, create this divine words coming through them and and express themselves in a way where people are just sitting back in this hut and listening to this poetry that's coming out of this mouth. So 
you can live this purpose no matter what situation you're in. And even if you're in a situation where it's a tough struggle, like a career that you don't like, you can still choose to say, how can I make this day a better day? How can I engage with people? Or how can I engage with myself and make it a better day? And you're so right to realize that. And I like your statistics, by the way. That's that's fascinating to hear. I didn't know about that. That, yeah, it's it's low. And people end up regretting life. And it's important to realize that, no, you can choose to feel your spirit, feel the vibrancy inside of yourself, invite that in. So that you can say, how can I, how can I express this spirit today? What is it that my spirit wants to do and wants to be today? And then you can be that person. You can, that's what you're here for. You're here to animate your spirit's desires. Mm -hmm. So I, let's, let's redefine what this idea of purpose is. So thinking about how we commonly or culturally or societally view this idea of purpose, but what purpose actually is. And so you've touched on that already in just what you've said, but I feel like a common belief is that purpose is this one thing that you came here to do, whether, you know, it was to be an astronaut or whether it was a teacher or very much tied to a career or profession, very much tied to a doing of something of some sort. And that if you don't fulfill this purpose, this career or this job or whatever we think that it might be, that we're therefore not living purposeful life, lives. Would you say that that's our common belief around what or how we would define purpose? Yes, absolutely. Because so many people say to me, I don't know what my purpose is. Like I, I, I've interviewed so many people and asked them, "What is what is their their big desire?" I want to I want to know my purpose. Can you tell me my purpose? Mm -hmm. And although it is true that some people do have a strong purpose, where they have a strong desire to do something specific, that doesn't mean that everyone needs to have that desire. What they need to do is to be able to, like I said, awaken to their spirit and experience the vibrancy inside of themselves and ask them, how is it that they can express themselves today? So it is true that the majority of people do tend to feel like there is something specific they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But what I want to kind of invite is maybe they're just having a moment in their life where they feel like, hey, maybe I want to start doing something different. And, and then they, they can ask that. They can, they can check in with themselves and see what, what would excite them. And maybe it isn't that career that they're having. And maybe they can move towards, you know, maybe they, they desire to be a speaker and they never thought about doing that in life. And they can think, well, what ways can I, can I open that into my life? Maybe I want to volunteer and start uh, speaking and doing some engagements. And so I think that when people can really understand that and, and check in with themselves and realize that the, a purpose can evolve, mm -hmm. right? So they maybe they go into this speaking thing, this speaking gig, and next thing you know, maybe they get invited to, to have a career in that. Someone thinks, wow, you're amazing. And then they're doing it for 10 years. And then maybe next thing you know, they want to they wanna do something else. Maybe they want to be an author or maybe they want to just help their their dying mom, or who knows, just something where they feel driven to do that. And I think the goal is to be able to, to be fluid and to be okay with yourself, with your changes, and to encourage yourself to make those changes. Because we're not meant to stay stagnant, we're meant to express ourselves in what are, whatever ways we're being guided to. And I think when you talked about that instinct, that's the thing that's talking to you. And so it's about listening to that. And, and many people are afraid to take that action because that instinct often asks you to do something that might be a bit uncomfortable because it's just like a little bit, a step greater than yourself or maybe a big step greater than your current situation. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that if we think of it then more to do with emotion than it is about the doing, that emotions are our body's way of translating the communication of energy and vibration which is how which is what our spirit is it's energy and so when you say it's about listening to your spirit and doing what your spirit is craving for you to experience that then when we are participating in an activity that it's not actually about the activity but it's more about the emotional experience or energetic experience that we're getting through the activity and that i speak about happiness as a compass that happiness is an emotion that can help us to align with the life that we actually came here to live then when we feel on purpose we feel happy, we feel at peace, and we and we often feel loving as well, that our essential nature is love, peace and happiness. So when we are in alignment with that, well, with alignment with our spiritual self, we feel those emotions. So we can say that, yeah, I feel really good when I'm doing this activity, or I feel really on purpose when I'm participating, you know, in in this particular um, situation. And that it's not the situation, it's not the, uh, it's not maybe the person, it's not even the location that you're in, it's none of the things that we've tied our happiness to, that is providing the happiness, that those are just a vehicle to allow us to actually feel that energetic vibration, or that we call emotion in the doing of those, but it's not actually the doing, it's us bringing ourselves and being who we really are in that moment. And our emotions confirm that. And so I hear you saying that same thing that it's not the actual activity, but it's that energetic vibration or that part of us that is being expressed and experienced in that moment. Yes, exactly. And it it brings up a topic that um, someone discussed with me and he said to me, and he's a, he's, a, he's highly successful uh, business owner. He said, <clears throat> Genevieve, I can't call it a purpose what I'm doing, I call it a calling, because he said, my calling is not an easy thing to do. He said, I could much rather do my other businesses, they're much easier, he said, but I have a calling to do that particular thing. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that, sometimes Mm -hmm. you can call that a purpose. But really, I think that that's a calling. And a purpose is something like you're talking about is that on purpose. So when you're doing that calling, can you do it on purpose? Can you experience joy in this calling that you're doing? Can you experience joy in that career that you think, oh, it bugs the hell out of me? Can you experience joy in a situation where life gave you some circumstances that, you know, maybe you're having to take care of your mom and you have no choice? uh, There are many people who are caregivers in that way and it just happened to happen to them and they have no choice how can you live on purpose with that and experience some good emotions about that how can you steer yourself in the direction to see what what is good here that i can experience rather than what is not good because sometimes we default to that not good situation and you know depending on who you hang out with you, you'll notice certain people like to do that. They like to talk about all the challenges in life and all the bad things that are happening and wouldn't, wouldn't it so everything is so hard. And, and sometimes you feel almost sick to the stomach hearing someone talk that way because you know that that's, it's not true. There's a bit of an illusion happening there because what's actually happening is that the divine is flowing through you. The divine is sending love through you. You are not separate from it. You are you this the quality of the divine is is joy, is happiness, is is energy, is is um exploration. It's all those things where you can experience a divine 
sacred union with it and, and realize how precious that is. So how can you find those moments and experience something precious and something while you're doing a choring type of activity, as an example? So it's true that it's not in the activity, it's in the experience. And sometimes the activity is fun, and you get to experience that joyful activity in that fun. But sometimes the activity is strenuous, and it's not so fun. But how can you still experience that with with some form of pleasure and, and experience that on purpose? On purpose would be, when you think about it, you're in alignment with the divine. You're in alignment with your spirit, you're in alignment with truth, you're in alignment with the knowing that that this pain is not real. What's real is that you're connected, you're connected to goodness, you're connected to joy and love and fun and all those positive qualities. And so I think that maybe people have this misconception mm -hmm. of this high-end kind of dream. I am living that dream, but it's a calling. And, and, and by the way, my calling is not easy. It's not easy. And I choose to experience joy in this calling because I know the changes that get made in people's lives. And that I focus on and realize, wow, that's amazing that people's lives can change. Sometimes I have moments where I'm working long hours and I'm thinking, when can I have some time for myself? And then I right away say, Genevieve, you got to shift. You got to shift. You got to, you got to experience that, that reality that there's goodness in everything and be on purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think the negative emotions that we experience are there also to help guide us towards that alignment and not yeah. to say that we're not going to experience other emotions because on from from a soul level we came here to experience other emotions other than just happiness and bliss and and extreme love all the time when we're we're on the other side of the veil we are just love and it's like well what would it be like to experience anger and frustration and shame and guilt and and a lot of the and a lot of the negative experience, uh, emotions we might feel because of particular circumstances that the earth plane provides for our soul to experience and that when those situations come up like like grief because of the loss of of a person or a job or you know a, a certain situation or frustration because you're sitting in traffic or when life seems to be getting a bit chaotic because you know your home is looks like a bomb went off and your kids are running all over the place or you've had you know an argument with your partner or or whatnot that we should feel into those situations, but then understanding that we don't unpack our bags and stay there because our natural alignment, again, is that love, peace and happiness. But when they come up to not shove them in the in the closet or under the rug to actually like feel into those times and, and really explore those emotions while that situation is providing it, but then say, okay, my natural, then it, after a while, it doesn't feel good again, because those emotions are there to say, well, it's because your truth is love, peace and happiness. And now what steps can you take to realign with those emotions? Yeah. And there's, it's interesting, you're saying that and there's information coming through at the same time, when you're saying it, I'm trying to tap into that information. What I was being shown is that it's true what you're saying. However, we have a tendency to believe that we're here to experience anger and experience all these negative emotions. But what I'm being guided is that if only we could start to realize that we could we could we could experience glory in our life and if everyone here on earth was more awake and came here and realized that they're this powerful spirit and are able to create beauty in this world 
create goodness, create um, environmentally friendly things, create amazing music, do all kinds of amazing things, amazing creations, then life would not be so strenuous and people would not be experiencing so much anger. They would not feel the frustrations that they would feel because they would be in alignment with who they really are. And I think the goal here is to understand that we can actually be more in alignment with this greatness so that those moments of frustration and anger and all that are actually very minimal. It's not, it doesn't need to happen as much as it is happening in our life. Like I'm being shown that the, the amount of that in our life could be like a speck of sand, as an example, on, on earth. And it, it's hard to fathom that. It's hard to realize that that's actually true. But if you imagine, if everyone here was awake and aware in that way, then yes, it would be possible. There would no, be no wars. There would be kindness. There would be, be people reaching out to help each other. There would be goodness. So naturally, when that is happening, then there would be goodness. There would be solutions for a lot of um, health issues, as an example. So less people are will be struggling because they're in tune. They're tapping into the higher wisdom about how can we heal ourselves. We wouldn't have to suffer so much with organ issues and all that kind of stuff because we're not necessarily breathing in all the pollution because we wouldn't be producing all the pollution. And so there would be support on, on all levels in terms of how can we create a better world, a better humanity, and and create an, industries that are working for us and not against us. So I think that although that concept, it's it's been a concept that's been around for a long time, is that we we get to experience these things, these issues, negative issues for a reason, what they're inviting us to say is that we don't need to experience those things anymore. We can, we can, and we never did need to, but however, the earth, the people on the earth were not as awake. And um, it's time to realize that we can move in that direction. And you do see that in the world. You see people becoming more awake and saying more amazing things and i think that that's the beauty of it it seems to be in the collective consciousness where people are starting to move in this direction i mean when you think about it even 20 years ago if you said that you did reiki people would think that there's something wrong with you now you say you do reiki and they're like oh that's so nice they don't ask you what is it there's very few people that do that and that's the same with, oh, I do energy healing. I mean, can you imagine? I, I'm saying I do channeling. That, if you said that 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, that would have been something extremely not so good to hear. So the world is changing. And the world, it's because the world is ready. The world is ready to start to experience this greatness. And I think the children coming onto Earth now, they get to move towards that and experience that. And, and I believe that they will be the ones saying, hey, no, we're not going to create the industries like this. We're going to make them environmentally friendly. We're going to do certain things. We're going to make this planet a good thing. We're going to grow our vegetables. We're going to, and on and on and on. <laughs> mm -hmm. I would love for that. And I'm in alignment with what you said. Um, and that when I said we don't unpack our bags and stay there, it's that yeah. natural inclination that says we're yeah. not supposed to be stewing in those emotions. We're not supposed to be depressed and yeah. anxious and overwhelmed and stressed. We're not. That physiologically, our body is communicating to us and saying you're in fight or flight. And that, you know, our breathing has gotten so much faster now than it was like 60 years ago. 60 years ago, we used to have, we used to breathe four, four inhales and exhales a minute. And now we're at 20. That's how fast we breathe now. And when I tried to slow down, it was four to six. When I tried to slow down my breath to four to six, it's like, I'm like gasping for air going where, but life was just like slower paced and we weren't operating 
out of our sympathetic nervous system like we are now that most of the time it seems like we're always in that instead of our parasympathetic. And so physiologically, our bodies are telling us that we were not in alignment with all of the dis-ease and disease that we have in our body. And our emotional self is always telling us to our mental self as well is communicating with us and letting us know that our thoughts are not in alignment with, with that greatness that you were speaking about. And so we've been conditioned or programmed to believe that we're other than that greatness. And so I know part of your book is really a bringing us back to the truth of, of that which we really are. And so if you could speak to a little bit more about that, that magnificence, and that uniqueness, and that specialness, and that extraordinariness that we are, that we're not, we, we don't know about it, we've forgotten. And that's the truth that part of the human experience is that we need that to be revealed to us again. And your book really speaks to to that reveal or to that remembrance of our truth, which is so beautiful. But oftentimes we go around and we think awful things about ourselves that we're losers and, you know, we'll never, it'll never happen for us. And no, we can't accomplish that. And who are we to think that we're amazing and great? And, and who are you to boast about it? And it's, it's, a lot of us playing small and being limited in our lives because of the lies and the programming and the paradigms that have been forced upon us really as children, but we don't know any better. We're just soaking it all in. So please remind us of the truth of that, which we really are, that that your book really brings us back to. Mm, yeah. A good way of doing it is I use logic. And the logic is that there's this energy in the atmosphere. And this energy is flowing through everything. It's not flowing above the chimney, down the chimney, and through. In the same way that the cellular network is not flowing above the chimney and through and into the house, it's coming through everything. It's coming through the walls of the house. It's coming, it's coming through the table. It's coming through everything. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that there's this higher energy, this energy called the divine, and when you really understand the qualities of the divine, the qualities of the divine, they know it has wisdom. They know that. They've seen it when they talk about quantum mechanics and how it has an intelligence. When you become the observer, it responds differently. So they know that it has an intelligence. People who've had near-death experiences um, or who have had out-of-body experiences, as I have, know that there's an intelligence in this energy. You start to experience it. Because when you start to ask a question, when you're in that state, when you're in your near-death experience or when you're in your out-of-body experience, when you ask a question, the answer is immediately there. And you can ask any kind of question. I remember asking scientific questions and this crazy science was given to me in an instant. And I didn't even understand the science because we hadn't learned it here. So there's so much information in this energy. And also we know that this energy consists of love because when people touch people, they experience this energy and they, for some reason, recognize that there's love in this energy. People who do energy work, as an example, like Reiki, they often call that energy love because they just feel this, this energy. And they also experience the energy as warm and that there's a vibration and that there's a pulse in this energy. And uh, a common word is the pulse of the universe. It's like it has a heartbeat. And what you're experiencing is the waves. So you experience the waves of the energy coming through. And of course, that acts as a pulse, the up and lower troughs, so to say, of the wave. 
And and the other thing that the energy has is power. It it can it can bring us electricity. It it has the power to create explosions. I mean, it's very very powerful this energy. And so this energy, like I said, is flowing through everything and everyone. It's not separate. It's not some pie in the sky thing that you're wishing would come down on you. Mm -hmm. It's it's you are in separate from it. And I think that people growing up, they were believe, led to believe that they have to hope and wish that something can happen and hoping that the answers will, will come to them and their problems will be solved. And if they're lucky, if some pie in the sky divine comes down and says, yes, your wish is granted, I will give it to you. But this energy, this divine energy, this knowledge, this love, this wisdom, this power is through you all the time. It's always there. And all you need to do is understand that when you place your awareness on this energy and experience it, and this is, goes in alignment with what you're talking about, experience, that's the key. When you get to experience it, that's when the energy becomes even stronger. When you experience love, the energy of love becomes stronger. When you when you think about the fun that you're having, you get to you experience more fun. So it's in that moment where you can place your attention to experience this divine energy, where you have this absolute marriage with it, and realize, wow, this is so beautiful, and this is the truth of all that is. I'm inseparable from it, and so that's the key: is to be able to experience that as much as you can throughout the day because we have moments where we get busy and we don't pay attention. But if you can take those moments, and even I remember when I was working, sometimes I was typing some report or doing something, and then I thought, Genevieve, breathe in the energy while you're typing. Pay attention to the love while you're typing. Experience the love while you're typing. So I would do it and people would come by, come in my office or, you know, talk to someone else in my office, leave, that kind of thing. And I, here I am trying to be blissed out and experiencing it so that I could be reminded of this beauty that exists instead of being caught in my, my mind of challenges and maybe being physically tired, that kind of thing. And I think that um, because when we're brought up in school with the award system, you do well, you get an A plus. I'm going to get, I remember the teacher putting a star on my paper because I got an A plus, but if I got a C, there was no star on my paper. And so I was led to have fear about tests as an example. And so, and many people have fear about tests. So there was this, there, this became this disconnection with me and, and joy. It was now dependent on something dependent on someone giving it to me, dependent on my teacher giving me a plus, instead of me experiencing it, no matter what I was doing in my life, no matter what test I was having, still experiencing that joy. We weren't taught that as kids, you know, when we're doing our test or when we're in school sitting there. How can we experience this, this, this energy, these qualities of energy, experience the divine and, and be happy with it? And I think that that's the key thing is, is in our experience of it. And in order to experience it, we must place our awareness that this is actually here. And that's why I like to use intellect a bit to understand, because then I can't deny it. If I understand the cell phones go through us, that's a fact. So therefore, why wouldn't this energy go through us and go through the walls and go through everything? It's not coming, you know, magically... <laughs> So when I understand that, then I realize, wow, like it's here. And now I can place my awareness on this knowing and invite the experience in. Invite the experience of love. Experience the love of this. Experience the intelligence of it. And through that experience, it expands. And then I believe the neural pathways change because you decide to change your own focus on it and become more aware of that rather than defaulting to the what's not working and all these problems. Mm -hmm. And it really takes a lot of that inward 
focus, right? That we're conditioned to look outside of ourselves for everything, for advice, where we say, what do you think about this? And what do you think? And asking everybody else what we're supposed to be doing and living our lives with a lot of shoulds and have tos because we are trying to fulfill external expectations for who we're supposed to be and, and what we're supposed to be doing. So we will be liked, so we will be accepted, so we will be loved, so we will be revered and all of those externally focused um, ideas and, and that guidance, but really the true guidance for our lives comes from, from the inside. And as you said, it does take that focus in order for us to go inward, to, to feel it, to recognize it, to connect with it. And also through your book is where it, it, it requires us to do that, to go inward to make that connection. And I agree with you when you said that, you know, maybe 20 years ago, if we would have said that, you know, we do Reiki or channeling, it would have been a weird thing. And I could say that that just happened with me with meditation 10 years ago, just and a little over 10 years, but where my family thought I was part of a cult and everything was weird and woo woo. And now meditation is such a buzzword 10 years later and there's apps and everyone's talking about it. And yeah, I meditate. And I'm like, I'm so happy for you because when I started, I couldn't tell anybody. And that was only 10 years ago. So I absolutely agree that we are in a time where people are more open to receiving even our conversation today. And that we do need to go inward in order for us to receive that guidance, to really tap into that knowledge, that wisdom that you're talking about as well. And, and ultimately, all those good feeling emotions are all part of our essential nature. It is always that. It just takes us taking some time out of our busy days to be able to, to tap into it. And how would you say that your book guides people to tap into that inner wisdom? And guidance? I think, yeah, I think the key, there's two key things. One is dealing with the mind, really checking in with yourself. Where's my mind right now? Where's my mind? How is my mind thinking? What's going on with my mind? And sometimes it can actually be painful when you do that in the beginning because you start to get an awareness like, whoa, my mind is going down the a path that I don't like too often. But be kind to yourself when you do it because it's natural. It's natural for the mind based on how we've been conditioned and brought up in our lives. Our default is to, to be thinking thoughts that are not that great. So first of all, be kind to yourself about it. Don't be hard on yourself. Realize that the fact that you're aware of that is a good thing. Because mm -hmm. now you can make choices to say, how can I change this thought to a positive thought? Mm -hmm. Right? How can I, how can I realize, as an example, when you said, we turn to other people? It's, it's amazing how many of us do that, because we want to feel like we're not alone. We want to feel supported. We want to feel like our idea is going to be a good idea because we get afraid about bringing our greatness, our creations into the world, about doing something different because we want to be safe. And so how can we shift in towards feeling safe? And there is a, there is a bit about trust happening. It's, it's a, it's, it's moving from feeling like I'm having these negative thoughts, these circumstances in my life, and I don't know what to do to get out of them, towards the opposite end, which is I know that the divine is intelligent. I know that it has the answers because it has intelligence. The quality is intelligence. And so if I just place my attention on this knowing that it has intelligence and I place my awareness on this intelligence, then the answers will be guided to me in the way that I need. And so I know that I am just, I can be the receiver. And in order to be the receiver, it's not like a passive receiver, it's an active receiver, so that you're placing your attention on receiving the divine wisdom that comes through to you. And so how do you tap into this experience is by 
first of all, the thing that draws us closest to anyone is love. And if we can feel the energy of love, that's the first step. And one thing that I often do is I place my hand kind of in my heart area, just in this area. I don't want to touch because of my microphone, but I place my hand there and I feel the warmth coming out of my hand. I notice that there's a some kind of subtle energy and or heat, but you tend to feel some sense of calmness. And over time, the more you do it, you start to experience this energy of love. And when you do that, you get to be, you get to feel a sense of being centered, centered in this divine energy. And when you get to be centered, this is the time when you get to realize you get to now experience the qualities of the divine and experience other emotions, experience whatever is coming to you at that moment. It doesn't matter what is meant to come to you, but whatever is meant to come to you is coming to you. And through that, you can place your attention into the divine and realizing that there's a divine wisdom and talk to this divine wisdom. Just say, like, show me something. Show me, show me what it is that I need to do to experience more joy in my life, if you want to experience more joy as an example. And stay in that heart-centered area and just pay attention to what wisdom comes to you. And through that, the next step is trusting that, that this intelligence knows and that what you just tapped into, you received as knowledge. So it's trusting that you receive that as knowledge and then taking action to do those things so that you can experience more of that. And you will prove to yourself when you do those things, that good things happen. And so that's a sign, because sometimes we need to prove to ourselves that what we're experiencing is real. And then that becomes a sign for you to experience more of it, because you'll realize that you are now opening your cavity up, so to say, to experience this, this greatness coming in. And that is all about taking a moment to place your attention there. And you don't have to do it for a long period of time. It could be a period of two minutes, as an example, to experience it. You could do it. And when you do that, it's what I've noticed is that the energy, your energy field opens up in a huge way, and it stays that way for a while. So that maybe you do it later on in the day, maybe in the afternoon, you tap in again. And each time you do it, what you notice is, you're becoming more receptive. Your antenna opens up wider, wider. And as days go by, you, you're experiencing this beautiful quality, qualities of the divine on a regular basis. And so it's just a matter of changing some patterns for yourself. But the good thing is it doesn't take long for you to shift this old way of being from kind of defaulting to the negative thoughts to experiencing these qualities and then learning how you can apply them in your life and experience those things that you want to experience to be on purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Thank you for all those different steps that you just shared and in, in everything that that you've just, um, you've just talked about. And so I just want to bring our conversation full circle in that in the introduction to the show, I, I talked about checking in with ourselves in any moment. And mindfulness is such a great practice for that, that we are there and attuning all of our senses to everything that that the present moment is really a, it's a gift in any moment. So we call it the present, but when we check in and checking in with that guidance, not just checking in with our senses, but also just tuning into that and asking ourselves, you know, do I feel like I'm exactly where I need to be doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing that there's this yes feeling inside that yes, I'm, fulfilling whatever that inner desire is and and having that inner confirmation through 
how we feel physiologically that as you said, when you tap in, it actually does physiologically release uh, neurochemicals in the body that lasts for several hours. So, you know, in the practice of gratitude, for example, that's exactly what it does that we have endorphins that, that are released. We have, um, several other happiness hormones like dopamine and, oh, there's another one. I always like it, there's a drug and so it's oxytocin, but there's a drug that has a very close name to it. And I'm just like, oh, serotonin. Is it dopa dopamine? Is no, it dopamine? Oxytocin, oh, oxytocin. But there's oxytocin. a drug similar to that. And so, oh, and, okay. and so I always, I'm like, is it that one? Um, and serotonin too. These are all hor happiness hormones that get um, released into the system as well when we're doing something that we enjoy. And so when we are on purpose, our body is communicating all aspects of our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual self are all telling us yes, 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 in this moment. So thank you so much for, for sharing some of the ways that, that we can do that and the importance of doing it as well. Now, Genevieve, if people want to connect with you after the show and grab a copy of your book, where can they do that? They can go to my website, liveatransformativelife.com. If they can't spell that, they can spell my name, GenevieveTaker.com. It'll redirect to that website. Go to the book section, and there you can receive my book. So, well, you, it'll, you'll be directed to whatever country you're in to be able to purchase that through the Amazon. Awesome. Thank you. Now, thank you again for being on the show today and speaking to us about the steps that we can take to live a happy and purposeful life. It was my honor. Thank you so much. I'd like to leave you with the thought for the day. If we're not feeling happy in our lives, we need to ask ourselves whether we feel on purpose doing the things we do every day. Do we feel authentic? Do we feel like we're living our true selves? Or are we living our lives according to external expectations with many shoulds and have tos, where we find ourselves saying, I should do this because my parents expect this of me, or I have to do this because that's what a good daughter does. It is impossible to feel on purpose and be inauthentic at the same time. If you check in with your happiness at any moment, your emotions will tell you whether you are on purpose in that moment or not. And I now know that my understanding of purpose, which I had come to understand from others, needed to be adjusted. I no longer needed to search for my one true purpose, but instead to check in with myself at any given moment and to ask myself whether I feel on purpose with whatever I am doing and to use my happiness as a guide. The truth is, whatever we are searching for outside of ourselves always exists within us. We just need to go inward to discover it. I invite you to check out my services on my website, atresagreco.ca, for more information about my coaching, workshops, and motivational speaking opportunities. You can connect with me through my website, on my Instagram page, atresagreco underscore steps to happiness, or my Facebook page, steps to true happiness with Teresa Greco. Thank you for joining me today on the happy hour. Keep smiling and be happy.